Hello, today we're going to be uh, focusing a little bit more on our uh, Python GTK WebKit, uh, very basic web browser. Um, actually getting a little more in depth into this portion of uh, using WebKit uh, than I had originally planned, but I have a lot of questions people are asking. I'm going to try to answer some of them today and just make some little tweaks on the script we already started working on last week. First things first, uh, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with a K, forward slash uh, WordPress is my WordPress site here. I'm going to go and uh, get the script that we worked, started last week. So I'm going to say WebKit uh, in the little search bar here and create a basic web browser with Python, GTK, and WebKit. Click here to download sample code. I'll open that with my archiver. Then I have an empty folder here. I'm going to just drag uh, this file into. And actually, it still has a tar file here, so let's actually extract that here. Okay, so there's our script. I can delete this tar file here now. And um, what I'm going to do now is uh, open up my terminal here. Make that a little bit bigger so you guys can see it better. And uh, we'll start editing it. Well, first let's see what we've got. Uh, we'll start up the script here. And currently it's a rather small one by default. Uh, one of these days we'll go over resizing it, but first off you'll notice that when we, when we do make it larger that this go button gets stretched out. Let's change that so that doesn't happen. We just want it to be a regular size button, however many, much space it takes to fit the word go. So let me close that and I'll go into our script here. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor, but go ahead and use whatever text editor you prefer. I'm going to come down here to where we packaged in that go button. So here's our go button. And uh, that's connected. Start pack. We are going to say comma. Go into edit mode. Comma. And we're going to type a capital F false. Save that. Now if we run our script again, drag our window up here, and we make it larger, you can see the button stays the same size. That's great. Now let's see, we'll go google.com and I'll click go. And it's kind of annoying having to click go every time. So how can we set it so when we hit enter while uh, typing google.com? Um, well, that's what we're going to work on next. So we're just going to vim into our script here. And then uh, we're going to go and we are going to um, connect um, our go button to, instead of this time, uh, well, not our go button, but our address bar. So we have our go button. When it's clicked, it runs uh, this uh, go but function. Go ahead, giggle. That's great. Um, but we want uh, it to actually happen when we hit enter as well when we're inside our address bar. So let's add right here underneath our address bar. I'm going to say um, address bar dot connect. So we're going to connect it to a function, but we need to tell it when we want to connect to this function. And we're going to just say active. Oh, sorry. Activate. So when it is activated, which is basically means when enter is hit, we're going to go a function. And we already have the function written out for the go button, because when you hit enter, we want to do the same thing that the go button does, which is our go but function. <laughs> and we'll run that. And let's see what happens. We'll drag this up. And we'll say google.com. And instead of hitting the go button, I'll just hit enter. And there, our script adds the HTTP because we didn't put that just as we wrote last week. And it loads the page. Perfect. We don't have to click go each time now if we don't want to. Next thing we're going to look at is this title here. By default, if you don't assign a title to your window, it's going to put the name of your script, which our script is called mybrowser.py, which is just what we named it. But we want it to actually display the title of the page that we're in. And that's the next part that we're going to add to this little script here. So um, what we're going to do is we'll scroll down quite a bit here. Here is our uh, WebKit uh, object that we've created. And after we create it, let's say web connect. So we're going to connect our WebKit uh, object to a function um, and the function will create in a second but uh, when do we want it to run we want it to run when there is a new title to the page we're loading so we will run this we'll say title dash changed so when the title of our web page inside our webkit object changes we're going to run a function which we're going to create in a second but we'll just call the function new title 
and then we'll come back up here and create that function. So just right here, I'm just going to def to define a function. We called it new title, and uh, we're going to pass some parameters to it. So inside these parentheses, and don't forget your uh, colon thereafter, um, we are going to, well, the first one will be our widget, but we can call it view, since that is our, our viewer widget, uh, widget that's sending that. Um, we're going to grab the frame and title, which really the title is all we care about. But when the uh, WebKit object sends um, information to this function, that's what it sends by default. And the third one is the title of the frame that we're loading. So at this point, uh, we can just say um, win, that's our our window object, because we're now modifying the title of our GTK window. We're going to say set title, so we're setting the title something new, and it's just going to be the variable we created right here, which was passed, called title. So go ahead and save that out, run our script, and if we typed everything right, we'll bring our window up here, drag it out, once again our go button is nice there, I'm going to type google.com, I'm going to hit enter, and as you can see, the title on our page here changed to say Google. Let's go ahead and do a search for Linux. And Ubuntu comes up. We'll also you notice the title's changed to Linux dash Google search. When we click on the Ubuntu, it now says homepage Ubuntu. Um, there we go. Now you'll also notice, and this was a question that was brought up to a, by a viewer to me earlier this week, is that when we click on links, our address bar doesn't update. And I thought I knew how to change that. But just before recording this tutorial, I realized that the way I was doing it really isn't working. But I'm going to show you what I've been doing, and I'm going to show you why it doesn't work. And hopefully by next week, I'll figure out the proper way to do it. And if you know how to, feel free to send me a, a, a private message here on YouTube, since uh, you probably can't post the code inside the comments. And uh, of course, I'll give you credit if you show me the proper way of doing this. But uh, let's go ahead and change it so when we click on a link, it updates our address bar as well. So let's go back into our script here. Also, just ignore, you know, for now, the output that uh, the WebKit per produces here. Some of it could be errors on a page that you may not notice and other random things. But as long as our program is working okay, that's just informational output there. Um, so we'll go back into our script here. And we're going to connect our WebKit to something else. So we have our web object here and we're going to connect it to a function and this time we're going to connect it uh, when there is a navigation request. So whenever there's a request to navigate somewhere or grab something from the internet that's when this is uh, going to take effect. So navigation dash requested so let's see, I spelled everything right there. Looks good. And we're going to go comma, and now we're going to have to create a function for this, and we'll just call it on click link. Great. Now we'll go up here to our top, and we'll add in a function here. Define, and as we just said, on click link. Um, we're going to have to. When we do that, when there is a navigation request, there are some variables passed to the function, and we're going to grab the variables um, or the information and put them into variable and objects here. The first one is our widget, which we'll just call view, or you can call widget is what I normally do, but the next one is uh, frame, just as before, and the third one in this case would be the request. This is the, um, the information being requested. Uh, by the web browser. Don't forget your colon there. And now uh, we're going to type in, uh, we'll t create a variable called uh, URI. And we're going to say equals request. So this is the request object that's sent right here. And we're going to get the URI. And don't forget our parentheses there. And then we're going to take that URI variable that we just created, which should be the link, the, the URL to the, um, uh, and I need to look up what URI stands for, because uh, I've never seen that before uh, working with WebKit. I'm sure someone will comment, and I appreciate that if you do. Um, once again, WebKit is pretty new to me, and I'm just kind of teaching you guys as I go along. Of course, that's how a lot of my tutorials are. Um, so anyway, we're going to take our address bar, 
and we're going to update it. We're going to set the text in it to equal our new variable of URI. So now we'll save that. We'll run our script. Here's our web browser here. Let me stretch it out again. And let's say I go to google.com. Now automatically you see here it says google.com forward slash blank. So it is doing something. Um, and then we'll just do a search here. We'll say uh, Linux. So as you can see here, it's loading stuff. So it seems to be updating, but it's, um, if we click here on Ubuntu, it obviously updates, say HTTP, www.ubuntu.com. So it seems to be working, right? Well, uh, let's, let's uh, try a different page, shall we? We'll go to filmsbychris.com. And you're gonna have the issue we're gonna see here on a lot of pages. Oh wait, what's going on? Why does it say Google, Google ads dot double click? Well, first off, I really need to remove that. I have not been a Google uh, partner in a long time, but I never got around to removing all the code from my page. But the problem with doing the address bar this way, as I quickly discovered, is that any request the page makes is loaded there, not just the entire page. So I'll give you an example. If I click on this Blender video here, uh, once again, just because the code's at the bottom of the page as far as um, the uh, Google Ads, but if you're requesting uh, YouTube videos, the YouTube video uh, embedded link will be there. Let me go to playlist here, which will actually bring me to a YouTube page possibly, if not. Okay, let's try clicking here. Anyway, as you can see, let me go to back to google.com and go to another page like um, Linux Mint. Let's see what happens when we go to Linux Mint site. Now, if it's not calling stuff outside of this page, but you see they have Google Ads and it was up there for a second and it quickly went to about blank, which a lot of pages seem to do. So this is not what we want because it's going to be, once again, grabbing any URL to any request that your page makes as well, not just the page itself. So obviously that's not what we want, but this could be very useful and I have some ideas to play with this and get information um, using this feature. So although this is not exactly what we're looking for and what I promised that viewer I would have today, and I apologize because I thought I knew and I didn't, um, this is still very interesting and hopefully something you can play with. So today we did learn about, you know, packaging in our buttons properly so they don't get stretched out if you don't want that. Adding activation when you hit enter inside the address bar instead of having to click on go. Uh, updating our title of our GTK based on the title of the web page you're going to. And then also uh, somewhat at least viewing all um, navigation requests made by a WebKit, even though it may not be the information we necessarily want. Although the information we want is in there, when we click on this link, that link uh, does appear in there, but for a brief amount of time before that page requests something else, and that's the issue. So I do hope you found this tutorial useful, and I will upload this updated script. There'll be a link in the description uh, to my WordPress page where there'll be a post on this and the code that we just updated today, so feel free to check that out. And I just want to thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. And also check us out on Facebook. There's links in the description, and I hope that you have a great day.